all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. guys welcome to next gen 15 and in today's video we're going to be doing a quick review or not so quick review of the grey half school festival which took place over this last weekend some fantastic rugby played um so if you are new to our channel please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification and as soon as new videos are released you'll be the first to know and as usual if you missed any of the action don't forget that you can catch it on the super sports schools youtube channel or you can download the app and take a look at the games over there. Either way, guys, there were definitely some fantastic games to watch. And uh, I found it a very thoroughly entertaining tournament. Now, I have to apologize in advance to the youngsters and to the public in general, in a sense, because I was only really able to watch a lot of the action on Phillip Field. Um, I did try and catch some of the games on Pollock Field, but unfortunately um, there was no commentary and there were no team lists. So it was quite difficult to identify a lot of the players. There are one or two players that I did mention um, and that I told that uh, played very well. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult, this type of thing, guys. I do have a panel um, that assists with these type of things, but not, none of them are based in uh, Port Elizabeth or Quebecer, uh, rather. So it does make things difficult. But anyway, let's get into the scores. Um, so on day one in Phillip Field, Westville had a tight win over Queens 22-20. I felt Queens were much more improved than they were um, at the Graham Rugby Day. Definitely seemed to be growing as a unit. Um, some, I mean, the, the, the loss against Kingswood was relatively tight. And uh, this Westville team has definitely got a lot of talent in it. I think there are some uh, prospects over there that will be definitely part of the Craven Week setup and all the rest of it. So yeah, very good win for Westville over there. Um, they will also be quite a dangerous unit in the KZN scene this year. Some enterprising backline plays. So let's see how things go over there. Um, then Kez had a nice win over Nico Milan, 20 points to 12. Very tight win there. Um, I think much improved from the Nico Milan side. Um, Kids, obviously, I think it's their first game, and I think they're only going to be having 11 games this season as well, guys, so not a whole lot of rugby going to be played over there, but a good first outing for the boys from Johannesburg. Um, Frames be nice win over JP 19-0. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it might be JP's first outing as well, so, so still trying to figure things out over there. Um, but friends, we look uh, full value, and I think they could be one of the most dangerous teams in the Eastern Cape. They've got some big forwards. They've got some exciting backline players. I'm looking forward to seeing how things continue there. Then Ota Nikwa absolutely demolished Salborne. No disrespect to Salborne. They were just outclassed in almost every department over there. Um, this is a well-drilled Ota Nikwa unit, a very strong team. Um, and... Tactically, they had Salborn figured out um, in the specific fixture. I think they really got in the face of the Salborn boys. Very physical. Um, the speedy backs absolutely punished any sort of mistakes made by the Salborn backline. Um, I don't think Salborn are a 40 points to 7 team worse off than uh, Otanikwa, so to speak. Um, but, I've, you know, if Otanikwa were full value, and I think anybody even from the, the community in East London will agree that this Otanikwa outfit was something else on the day. They played some spectacular rugby, and unfortunately, Salborn, Salborn were just in the way and uh, just didn't get the, the you know, the, the correct bounds of the ball on some occasions. We're very unlucky on some occasions, but Otanikwa were full value. Then Bishops were absolutely outstanding against St. Andrews. I mean, this is a rivalry that's... I mean, it's been going on for, I think it might be 100, 100 years or over, guys. It's been a long rivalry between these two schools. And Bishops looked full value. What a well-coached and well-drilled outfit. Um, their front row was absolutely amazing. I mean, the tight five in general, the link-up play between the back lines, I think that was great as well. And when what I, you know, what I saw there was that there was a definitely an idea from the St. Andrews side to target Bruce Sherwood. And he was used as a decoy runner in the early stages before he's uh, brought more into the game. And when he sort of got brought more into the game, uh, the floodgates opened. So very unlucky for St. Andrews. You must also remember St. Andrews have quite a few injuries. Um, Gray High School, 41-9 over six. Um, You know, quite a few of their players that were injured came back. Um, full value to them. I don't think the sack side is, um, uh, you know, 
as weak as the scoreline suggests. They definitely got some decent players in that team. Um, but Gray in front of their home crowd were just absolutely outstanding. Much improved from their display at the, um, at the Graham Rugby Day and definitely looked like a danger team in the Eastern Cape. Uh, Northwood, nice win over Parktown from Joburg, 20 points to 5. Um, then Kingswood losing to Michael House, their first loss of the season, only by 7 points. And this is a decent Michael House team, guys. So no no disgrace really there for uh, the boys from Makanda. Um, unfortunately for them, a very tight game over there. I did manage to watch some of that game. Um, you know, they had their opportunities to basically at least salvage a draw, but unfortunately the pressure just told and the Mark Klaus defense just held the line and uh, full value for them for their victory. Woodridge decimating Andrew Robbie 55-0. Some very exciting backline players in that Woodridge uh, outfit, guys. Um, the fly-off especially to me was an absolutely fantastic talent. Um, just ran the game. Um, some speedy backs, and I think Woodridge could be a dark horse in Eastern Cape Rugby. Then speaking about dark horses, Hudson Park, 28 points to 3 win over Dispatch. A very, very good Hudson Park outfit, playing against Dispatch who play good hard rugby. Um, and uh, Hudson Park, I think, also a danger team in the Eastern Cape this year. Um, then Ronda Bosch, 24-18 over Graham. I definitely would have thought this would be a, a, quite a bigger margin of victory. I think Ronda Bosch are looking very, very good this year, but Graham played with uh, absolute heart and determination and pushed them right until the end. So good win there for Ronda Bosch against the game Graham team. As remember that Graham team's got two EPD players, very good fly off, some good combinations there. So let's see how they get on as the season progresses. Um, recently lost the tight game to Kingswood as well, obviously. Um, Muir winning 23 against Ettenberg-Lietle, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, 23 points to zero. Um, very interesting game. I'm, I've managed to catch bits and pieces through it. I mean, guys, it's a lot of rugby to watch on two fields at the same time, you know. Um, but yeah, the Muir backline looked quite decent. And, uh, you know, the boys from Eton um, uh I, I thought they were they played with a lot of heart and a lot of spirit. So good game over there. Then we move on to day two of the festival. Uh, first up, Muir against Parktown. So Muir uh, proving that their win wasn't a fluke, winning 19-15 over the boys from Joburg, who I think have a bit of work to do, but let's see as the season progresses. Uh, Jeppy, to me, this was an upset win, 17-13. Um, it definitely looked full, like Rodewash looked full value, and I definitely thought that they were... Um, uh, you know, we're going to comfortably win the game at one stage, but the comeback by JP was just absolutely insane, guys. Uh, these guys never gave up for a second, and their front row especially was absolutely outstanding. I like their little scrum off as well. You know, he plays with it. He's got a, he's a lot, very fast. He's like a little Jack Russell going in and, uh, you know, giving it to the opponents. I really like that style of scrum off. Um, but yeah, tight win there, great comeback win. And the, and the Muir win was the comeback as well, pretty much. Um, then Hudson Park beating a Brunwach 26-10. Um, Brunwach looked overcooked, guys. And I'm not going to try and take anything away from Hudson Park. This is a very exciting back line. Um, the loose fort play was just outstanding. They got such a well-rounded uh, unit. Um, very exciting team. But uh, Brunwach were not playing to their full potential. I mean, I think they've played eight games already this season, guys. So very overcooked. I think just came back from a festival as well. Um, so let, let's just see how the season progresses. That's another team I think could do some damage in, uh, in the Eastern Cape season, but I think they need to calm down the fixture list a little bit, especially, I mean, you know, most of these guys have only played three or four games. Um, you know, most of these first teams, so they're a lot more fresher than the Brunwach outfit. Um, some might say, you know, Brunwach might be more battle-hardened, but all the traveling as well, I just, I felt they were uh, uh, very undercooked. Then Solborn Framsby. Now, this was an interesting game. I mean, you know, n like neither side gave even an inch, and it was a very, very physical game. Referee had to get involved a good couple of times and calm the boys down because this was like a grudge match. I mean, Framsby basically looking as if they could be up there in terms of the Eastern Cape unofficial champions, so to speak. Solborn, a couple of losses on the trot feeling the pressure, but they came through as a unit. Um, a lot of spirit in that Solborn team. And I think it was that team spirit and the dedication to the coaching staff that pulled them through this one. Um, and then we move on to the game of uh, that everybody was looking forward to, uh, the Bishops versus Otaniqua game. And Bishops comfortably winning 31-20. And I think the scoreline is quite flattering to Otaniqua with all due respect. Um, I think Bishops left quite a few points on the board. 
but this is a well coached outfit. I mean, you know, you got to take your head off to West Chetty. I think, but I think if if people had to put money down, I think a lot of people probably would have expected uh, Otaniqua to maybe eke out a win. But this outfit is just well drilled and well well coached, and everybody knows their role. Um, so that was the difference to me on the day was the tactics. Um, you know. Bishops basically had a game plan to counter all of Otaniqua's strengths. Um, and even though at the beginning, the front row of Bishops looked like it might be struggling against, uh, you know, the sheer power of that Otaniqua pack, um, they took them on. They really took them on. And there was uh, some very impressive individual performances. But this Bishops team as a unit, I mean, you know, you, you think to yourself, the 2020 team was absolutely amazing on paper. There could have been five to six SA schools players in that team. And then you think that's generational. Then last year's team was absolutely phenomenal as well. Uh, think about those wins, especially over Rondebosch and Poor Riz last year. You think to yourself, can they do it again? And yes, they can. There's just some outstanding talent in this Bishops team. And looks like Bishops rugby's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's back to its peak almost, you could say. Touch wood, don't want to curse the boys from Cape Town. Then the last game was a tight affair, Grey High against Kez, 22-15. Um, Kez, I, I, I felt in this game that Kez were probably undercooked. Um, you know, instead of like Brunfach being overcooked, I think they were undercooked. I, you know, like I said, I think it's only their second game. Um, so the, the difference between the two teams in this fixture was that the Grey High School team was a lot better conditioned and more ready for the fixture. Um, I do think if this was played at Kez, I think it would have been a reverse um, in terms of the scoring. But I think that Grey High School crowd really pulled their team through. Great leadership shown by the Grey High School outfit. Um, but tactically and talent-wise, I mean, these teams were essentially equally matched in a large, to a large degree. So um, great win for Grey High. They're very unlucky for Kez. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this Grey High team develops as the season progresses. Um, Graham beating dispatch on Pollock Field on day 2 15 0. Um, after that tight game against Rondebosch, you probably would have expected a bigger victory, but c'est la vie. Um, then Sack securing a win over Queens 15 14. You just got to feel so sorry for the boys from Queenstown. Eh? I mean, all every game that they've lost, they've just lost by just a couple of points, just the wrong bounce of the ball. And uh, again, I say the Saks outfit's not as bad as pe uh, you know people might think based on the Grey High School game. Uh, but you know there are definitely some talented teams, and I think they could pull some surprise in the Western Cape scene. So what you're seeing definitely happening is that Queens are definitely on an upward trajectory. Um, but let's hope that they can actually you know take the take away those two to three point deficits and actually convert them into wins. I mean the margin of victory has been very small for their opposition in most of their games, and silly little mistakes have uh, cost them their games. So hopefully that they can uh, they can change that and just execute a bit better. Then the Unicorns played the Quaja second team, forty eight seven win for the Quaja second team. Now you guys must remember something, and I said it about this year's Paul Jim team, and what I'll say about next year's Otaniqua team is that they're going to be like generational. Not like there has not been an Otaniqua team like with this much natural talent um, since 2013. So it's been a long time coming, and they I think it's their centenary next year. So they've been building specifically towards the centenary year, and they've got some great players, and I think. A lot of the under seventeens were on that pitch the day, so uh, on this day, so they they gave the unicorns a hiding, and maybe it's a sign of things to come uh, for next year when these two teams might meet each other. Northwood tight win over Nico Milan twenty three twenty again. Nico Milan just uh, you know just that little bit of uh, you know just that little bit of execution lacking over there, um, just a couple of points that they leave in um, on uh, you know on the field. Um, but tight losses continually, and uh, let's just hope that uh, they can turn things around as well because there definitely is some talent in that team. You must take a look at their fly off. I have no idea how that is a fly off. That is the biggest fly off I've ever seen in my life. I think his name's JC or JD Van Sale. Uh, just watch the game, guys. You'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Then moving on to Westville, beating Kingswood 21 7. Kingswood second loss on the trot. No disgrace there. Talked about the Westville team before. Definitely not a bad team. A lot of talent in there. Um, so Kingswood will probably just go back to the drawing board, but I still think they could pull off some great victories this year. And uh, Westville will definitely be a, a, a side to watch um, in the KZNC, no doubt about that. And then final game, St Andrews. I don't think many people would have given them much of a chance against a gay Mark Outfit. 
but they pulled it off despite all their injuries and having their backs to the wall and this is uh, stories you always like to see guys when a team that has their back against the walls with injuries and losses um, and they make a comeback so nice win there for St Andrews 17 points to 15. So before we get on to our team of the tournament, obviously, as usual, what we're going to do is just do some uh, honorable mentions. Um, so let's just start off with the outside backs. I really like the look of Cabello Tecane from Kez. I think he's a very exciting prospect, a lot of talent, a lot of speed. Uh, Okwan Kovane from Salborn. I mean, uh, this guy was within a whisk of being named in the Dream Team. So much talent and he's a big boy. Runs in, runs with a lot of power and speed, can step like nobody's business, really like the look of him. Then Gabriel Mentour from Bishops as well, just another player that looks outstanding. He's going to, I mean, he has to be part of uh, the Craven Week conversation this year, surely, um, in the Western Cape. And then Zukisani Tom, he's moved from eighth man to wing, looks like it's uh, paying off. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Zuki develop further over there. I think he can become a very, very special wing. Um, I know that he likes to play 8th man, he's always played at 8th man in his youth, but I think um, as time goes on, this will prove to be a masterstroke. And then uh, Brett Kliegel from Westville, I thought he was quite an interesting player as well. Very dynamic, got a good boot, reads the game very well, seems to be in the right place at the right time a lot. Um, so let's see how he gets on as the season progresses. Uh, centers, Likorna Finker from Westville. He was a Hudson Park boy last year, just moved over to Westville. I really liked the look of Likorna, named him in the PAX 100. He was a wing. I love his running style. I mean, that try that he scored, you know, where um, yeah, in the first game, I just thought it was fantastic how he opened up play. Um, then Nick Lane from St. Andrews. He was a fluff that I spoke a bit about uh, during the Graham Rugby Day. I thought he was outstanding there, and I thought he was outstanding as a center. Um, I think he's a very, very high uh, IQ rugby player, and I look forward to seeing more of him. Uh, Tony Braders from Otaniqua. Otaniqua looked good in the first game. Um, obviously, he lost to Bishops in the second game, but uh, Braders definitely didn't disgrace himself in either game. Molyneux looks like a very interesting prospect from Rondebosch. Uh, great running lines. Um, it, you know, obviously helps him having a mammoth number 12 at Ricketts to help him uh, get through gaps and all the rest of it. But, uh, you know, he takes his opportunities with both hands. Looks like a very interesting player. Then Tadiwa Chikotiro from Kingswood. I've heard really good things about him. Didn't get to see a lot of him, but I saw him on the Graham Rugby Day. Um, I thought he was absolutely outstanding there. Looks like someone that's, uh, you know, you might want to keep an eye out on this year. Uh, halfback, Zach Surfontaine from Fransby. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. Um, we don't know there's so much depth in scrum off the scrum off position this year in South Africa, and he he definitely looks up there uh, with the best of them. Mitle Matanise from Grey High. Now it was interesting. The, the The panel was definitely split in the middle. Some guys felt that he was a bit too adventurous. Other guys felt that that's a part of the game that uh, you know uh, defines him. And um, my personal opinion is that I think he can make those magic moments happen, but. In difficult circumstances, I think he needs to just show a cooler head, and I think that will happen as the season progresses. This guy's just come back from injury, hasn't had a full season since he's an under-15 player. The talent is there. I mean, you know, his uh, distribution is fantastic. Um, kicking under pressure was a bit, you know, that, that's something that could improve, but that will improve with time, obviously. Tactical kicking as well will improve with time. I just think he needs a bit more time to settle into the position. Um, but I have to give him a shout out because he is just a fantastic talent. Then Shawn Blackenberg from Bishops, again another player that was so close to making the dream team guys. I really rate this guy, I thought he controlled the backline play very well, very decent boot. Um, very hard to leave him out of the team but you know, not everyone can make it obviously. Then Dandani Dweber from Hudson Park, I thought it was outstanding. Um, great distribution, great ball runner. Put, got his back line going very nicely, very entertaining player. Um, I see Hudson Park as like, almost like the France of schoolboy rugby this year. They're just playing such dynamic and interesting rugby, like outside the box rugby, very entertaining. And then I have to give a shout out to Buko Pansi from Woodridge. Um, talked about the demolition job that he basically orchestrated against Andrew Robbie. Um, I think he's a very interesting player that could do some very interesting things this year. Not a lot of Woodridge's games are televised, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can hear from the Woodridge community how he gets on this year. 
Loose forwards, Diewald Gerber, another player so close to making the dream team, guys. Like an absolute whisker, the same as Tabang Mfafi. I mean, in the number seven position, we absolutely blessed uh, this year with depth. Um, Diewald's only under 17. I've known about this kid since he's under 14, guys. When I first saw that, I first heard um, about that Ota Nick under 14 side when he was still under 14, guys said to me, you got to take a look at this team. Dealville was a giant of a player back then and nothing much has changed. I mean, this guy gives it his all on the field. Absolutely lethal player. Like I said, just came within a whisker of making the dream team. And I think it would have um, it would have been a different story had uh, Ota Nikwa prevailed over um, over Bishops. I think he would have been a shoe in then. But I, I, I just felt that, you know, maybe it's just a little too early to put him in the dream team um, in, in terms of this tournament. Um, but... An under-17 player and an amazing player and someone that's going to do big things. Uh, Mfafi was amazing as well. I thought he had an outstanding game, especially against Gray. I've got Jake Barnard over here from Gray High. Um, you know, I think he does the basics extremely well, works very hard on and off the ball, but it's his leadership that really makes him stand out. Then Siba Mahashe, oh man, I tell you what, it was an absolute coin toss between him and the eighth man um, that we got selected in our dream team. It literally was a coin toss. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between all the panelists, guys. I don't select these teams myself. I, I, I rely on a panel. I rely on other people's opinions as well. Um, so this was just like, this was split down the middle. And the only reason why he didn't wasn't the starter um, in the dream team was just because the guy that was selected ultimately had to face tough opposition. and. Um, played extremely well on both games and it was the quality of our position faced. But Siba, uh, my opinion, so far from what I've seen in the country, I think he's the likely starting SA School's eighth man this year. He was absolutely outstanding, very special player. Then Gareth Blackmore from Rondebosch. I mean, this kid has grown. Uh, he looks like a fully developed, grown man already and he's a schoolboy. Um, I thought he was great as well. Um, great leadership on the field. Um, a physical presence, uh, plays with a lot of heart. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how he gets on this year. Locks, uh, Patrick Itete from Otaniqua, always have to mention him. Um, very physical presence on the field. Um, perhaps not his best tournament, um, and I think you'll agree on that as well. Um, but I think it's mainly because he was targeted. I mean, the guys knew, you know. I mean, after that, uh, that photo on Twitter went viral, Obviously, everyone is going to start targeting him. It's the same as Sherwood. Everyone targets Sherwood because everybody knows about Sherwood. So Patrick got really, really targeted and the guys went after him. I mean, it wasn't one guy tackling him. It was two or three guys taking him on at the same time. And to me, the reason why I need to give Patrick a shout out is because, uh, you know, he took it in his stride. He never lost his cool. He never lost his temper despite, you know, guys going after him. Um, you know, trying to trying to distract him um, from his game and all the rest of it, but he, he continued and he still made some great carries and some contributions. Um, I still think special player. And John Ray Skeppers from Framsby is an absolute monster. I mean, this guy, this is a big kid, guys, and uh, he he did definitely physically impose himself on the games that he did play. Um, you know, uh, you know, I think he's almost two meters tall and 120 odd kilograms, so he's not a small boy at all. Devon Dupriya from Selborne, I think, didn't disgrace himself at all, even in the first game. I think he played very well, played his heart out. Second game, he was one of the key reasons why Selborne were able to secure that uh, that that win over Framsby. Um, the exchanges between him and Skeppers was absolutely amazing as well. Great to see. Um, Shonkin, I hope I'm saying that right, from Westville, very much, very much impressed me on the first day. Um, I got to see a little bit of him on the second day, but I think someone definitely to watch this year. I mean, surely he must be in the Craven Week mix for the uh, mix for the Sharks. Then Aiden Norris from Bishops, I thought outstanding. Played with a lot of heart, um, plays to a structured game plan as well. Where's Chetty just knows how to get the best out of all of these players, and I think Aiden's a dark horse this year. Then we move on to the front row. I think Rion Swart from Otaniqua. This is another guy. Um, him and Josh Dulacia. Might as well talk about both of them. It was so difficult to leave either of these guys out of the dream team, guys. It was so tough because they are both hard as coffin nails. I mean, these guys don't stop. And I thought the line I've thrown in the tournament in general wasn't great. And it hasn't been that great, actually, in the schoolboy season in general. I hope that improves. But I still think these two guys are outstanding players. And the, the line I've thrown was much better than most of the other hookers that I've seen so far in the country. 
and hard as nails. Jeez, these guys play until the last second, eh? and they, they don't stand back for anybody. Um, then Joe Zulu from Jeppy, I thought was great as well. He's only in grade 11 this year, I believe. And um, I, I really think that JPU front row is very underrated and I'm looking forward to seeing how they progress as the year continues. Leah Matibele from Grey High, I thought was another outstanding player in this tournament. Played with a lot of heart, scrummed very hard. Um, you know, definitely you can see one of the team characters, someone that, uh, you know, forms part of the team Gies, that spirit of the team. Um, really liked his style of play as well. Very aggro, but controlled aggression. And then Ruan Swat from Nick was just an absolute unit. I think Southwestern districts are going to be absolutely dangerous this year with all the talent that they've got over there. So keep an eye out on all of these players. Now, naturally, guys, there are going to be a lot of arguments and back and forths. The funny thing is, is that it's always the parents that give you the most grief. And parents that might not even be involved, that not have a son playing rugby. You got some 40, 50 year old giving you grief about a dream team full of kids, right? It's kind of weird. It's kind of bizarre. Like, it's the kids that behave themselves the most. Like, they're like, oh, what about this play? Or what about that play? It's like, it's a great debate. And I do this for the youngsters. I don't do this for the parents, to be honest with you. I, I, I do it for the youngsters. I did a poll on Instagram because uh, obviously I got a, bit, got a bit of hate mail, you know, after the North State, uh, you know, team of the tournament. And I uh, put up a poll on our Instagram and it was overwhelming. It was like 90% of people said, hey, continue with the dream team thing. So I listened to the audience, which is the youngsters. Parents, calm yourself down. You know, let the kids enjoy the game and let them enjoy the coverage that we give them. Because this is about them. It's not about you with all due respect. Anyway, enough with the ranting and raving about crazy parents. Let's get into the Grey High School team of the festival. So at fullback, I went with JT Stradon from Otaniqua. Under 17 player, quick feet, great boot. I mean, this guy's also been a prodigy since a young age. I think there can be very few arguments over here in terms of a selection at fullback. Um, he just definitely looks like a player for the future. Very excited to see how he progresses as the season continues. Then you can't argue at right wing, guys. Let's be honest. JJ Daters was absolutely outstanding. And the scary thing is that he's an under-17 as well. Surely he's going to be in the SA schools mix this year. Surely he has to be in the mix at least. I mean, he was absolutely outstanding in this tournament. Every time he got the ball, he looked like he was going to make something happen. Um, and he, I mean, he even got past uh, Bruce Sherwood tackle. I mean, not many people do that. So very excited to see how JJ continues on his development. But I think he's going to be a dangerous player as, things go, uh, as the season goes on. Very exciting young talent. Then at outside center, went with Ace Nongogo from Hudson Park. Um, you know, the Hudson Park back down, like I said before, it's champagne rugby, guys. Just pure, entertaining, great rugby. And they link up so well, and they've, they've got almost a telepathic understanding of each other. But if there was a player that shined during the tournament, in my opinion, it has to be Ace. He played some outstanding rugby, very entertaining player. Um, you know, he's, uh, he, he, he's someone that just plays for the love of the game. He really enjoys it. He's very entertaining. That sort of attitude that he brings on the field is absolutely infectious and... Uh, I think he's going to go on to do great things in the game. I'm really looking forward to seeing that more of Hudson Park. They're very entertaining side. Then uh, inside center, I mean, if there's anybody in the country that wants to argue about this, then, uh, you know, there's no point. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to argue about it. It's Bruce Sherwood every day of the week. What an outstanding tournament this young guy had. I mean, the, the, he's just so massive for a center, for a schoolboy center as well. But he mixes that with so much skill guys i mean this guy's ability to read the game and open up space and it's like where's chitty built the perfect player over here through years of mentoring maybe that's not the case but that's the way i see it i just see it as a a, a seriously beautiful collaboration it's uh and i don't use the word beautiful in rugby uh, a lot but i I'm, I'm serious it's just it's fantastic to watch and I mean, this, this guy's going to go on to do amazing things in the game, guys. And, uh, you know, the heartbeat of a very, very strong Bishop side. But still, you know, the whole team doesn't revolve around him. And that's what I love about the style of Bishop's rugby is that it's completely a team game. It's not about one guy, but, you know, the, the ability to shine like he does is just absolutely amazing. He just opens up space and it takes two to three guys to take him down sometimes. 
Ah, he's going to be dangerous this year. No doubt about that. Then we move on to the left wing. And uh, I, I had to go with another Bishop's boy here, yeah, Rupert Holmes. Um, you know, I just thought some, someone that played an outstanding game, a couple of games. I mean, you know, the, the guys, he reminds me a lot of Matt Turner for some of the older guys. You know, Bishop's old boy, I think from either 2006 or 2008 team, you know, a generationally gifted team back then. And uh, he reminds me a lot of him. I just uh, the, the guy's ability to read play and, uh, you know, beat his man on the outside just through sheer speed was just outstanding. So he's he's definitely going to be up there in the trans, uh, try scoring charts this year. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Fly off, we went with Logan Muller. Interesting choice over here. I mean, this is someone I spoke about a heck of a lot on the Graham Rugby Day. I said, this, guy, this guy's got something about him. His ability to open up play, he's so unpredictable, um, got a great step. He just finds space where it just doesn't seem that you can find space. And um, I, I, I just thought, like an educated left boot as well, you know, decent kicker, decent boot, um, you know, goal kicker as well. I mean, he's a complete package and people might point to his size, but, you know, he played against some big boys and uh, he didn't disgrace himself at all. And he's no disgrace in defense as well. So for me, I think, uh, the, although there were some outstanding flowers at the tournament, no doubt about it, to me, he really stood out again. And uh, let's see how his season continues. He's definitely an interesting prospect. Scrum off should be no surprise. Hashim Peed, he was just absolutely outstanding. The link play between the backs and the forwards um, was outstanding. Um, you know, he, he, I mean, if you think about it, last year, Bishop said Imad Khan, right? So, of course, it's going to be very difficult for Pede to uh, to stamp his authority on the game um, uh, last year. Um, I'm not sure if he's grade 11 or grade 12 yet, to be honest with you. So, uh, that, that that might be a moot point. But point is, is that Bishops continue to produce great scrum offs. I mean, they've been doing it for a couple of years now. You think about, uh, you know, William Rose. You think about Imad Khan. Um, there's a player whose name I'm forgetting now that's playing at UCT, but he was our standing scrum off for Bishops as well. So it looks like a position that they're developing quite nicely. I just thought his passing was crisp, his ability to put his uh, players into space, um, always at the point of breakdown, willing to help out as well. Great, great tournament for him. Then eighth man, guys, again, I said, uh, you know, it was very, very hard to leave out uh, Siba, but uh, to me, uh, Camden Skuman from Otaniko was absolutely outstanding. Um, even when they lost to Bishops, I still think he showed a lot of heart and a lot of talent. Um, the guy's ability to break open plays is something else. Um, takes a lot of people to take him down, deceptively strong as well. Um, and I think someone that's going to be making a lot of noise as the season progresses. Very special player here. Quachas are a very special team. So let's see how let's see how they progress. I think he's definitely going to be up there amongst the top ranked eight men in the country come the end of the year. Then uh, blindside, South Africa obviously open side globally, but uh, number seven jersey goes to Tion Jacobs. Um, now there might be a bit of controversy there. Again, the panelists were. You know, talking between him and Diawal Khaba and the 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 Kev's number seven, but ultimately Tion never let his head go down. I mean, even when they were completely outclassed by the Quachas, he still fought. Eh? He fought until the last second. Very aggressive player. Maybe a bit. Maybe the aggression could be a bit more controlled. You know, some some of the guys said, but at the same time, that comes with maturity. Right now. The fact that he's an aggro player that gets in your face, that tackles hard, you need someone like that in your team. You need a warrior, and this guy's an absolute warrior. Um, a, a big reason why that uh, you know they secured that win over Framsby. I mean, he really got in the face of a big Framsby pack. He really got in the face of the Otaniqua pack when you know. Even, I mean, when your team is losing like by that margin, you're missing to yourself. You got no business getting in the opposition face, and that's in 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 that sort of case. But yeah, he didn't care. He just carried on going, and uh, and that's the reason why we felt that uh, you know he was a strong contender for uh, um, you know being in the team of the tournament. Moving on to uh, open side, we went with uh, Cornet Skippers from Framsby. Um, Framsby were very unlucky to lose against uh, Salborn. Um, very very tight game there. First game was also first game they absolutely dominated and the pack dominated and uh, 
Kone is a Kone is a player that's just there at the point of breakdown all the time. He's an absolute nuisance at the breakdown. Um, very physical player, puts his body on the line. This is just your ideal number six. This is someone that you want in your team. Um, I also like the guy from, I have to add the guy from Gray High School at number six as well. Not the biggest player I've seen, but, you know, played with absolute heart and just threw his body all over the place. And that's the thing is that, for me, he was someone that was playing for the enjoyment of the game and being there with his mates. Whereas I see someone like Corne, I see structure in, I see structure in it, you know. It's like, he go like, he puts his body on the line, but there's a plan behind it. I'm very, very intelligent player, very good leader, and um, I'm, I'll be very surprised if he isn't part of the EP Craven Week setup this year. Okay, so moving on to the locks. First up, we have Adam Duvall from Bishop. Should be no surprise there. This guy was very physically imposing, um, took on all comers, drove back players that were sometimes bigger than him. Um, I think he gave that Otaniqua pack hull. I mean, it, it was it was actually crazy. I mean, how uh, how physical he was, and um, I, I just think against St Andrews as well, he was absolutely outstanding. I mean, this is a very very interesting player, and uh, someone that might be somewhat under the radar, even though we named him on our packs 100 list. Um, line out work was fantastic as well. I I, I don't know, guys. I, I think he definitely has to be part of the Western Province Craven Week uh, conversation, at least. I know there's a lot of depth in the Western Cape, but wow, this guy, he looks uh, like a very interesting player. The next up, uh, we went with uh, Dan Toy from uh, Gray High School as either lock. And I just thought that his line out play was absolutely outstanding. I mean, this guy always disrupted the line outs. Um, very, very physical player as well, not afraid to get stuck in. But to me, the thing that really stood out was his line-out play. Like, he he disrupted every line-out that he almost, that he competed with. And, uh, you know, it always made the hooker think twice when you've got someone like that that can read your calls and your throws so well. And I think he did it outstandingly. So, um, you know, the Grey High School team was... Uh, you know, the two tight, well, I mean, the game against Kez was very tight, but two great victories. And um, it, I think he showed a lot of character as well, especially during that last fixture against Kez. I mean, he was one of the key reasons why Gray were able to sneak through a victory over there. Then moving on to tight head, uh, to me, the guy that really stood out was Google Masango, guys. I really loved watching this guy play. Um, I thought he was thoroughly entertaining. Uh, he scrummed like an absolute machine. Didn't stand back for anybody. He's an, a very, very imposing unit as well. And his work at the breakdown, I've never... Props, let's be honest, props generally don't like to work. They like to scrum and they like to hurt people a little bit, generally speaking, obviously, you know. But Google did so much work at the breakdown. I mean, he was a key reason why JP got that victory in their last game. I mean, he was just absolutely outstanding. Um, at the breakdown, and um, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of him this season. I'm gonna keep a very close eye on him because, like guys, like I said, he's very, very entertaining to watch, and he's got such a great presence on the field as well. Dangerous player. Him and Joseph Zulu together um, is a front row. Um, props. I think they're going to do some real damage this year. So let's keep a close eye on him. Then at hooker, guys who could have gone. Anyway, I mean, let's be honest, Rion Swart was absolutely outstanding. Josh Dulacier is just a special player as well. But ultimately, we had to go with uh, with Gray High School's Ivan Ingram. What a player, what a tournament. What a great couple of weeks he's had as a player. I think must, he must be one of the most underrated hookers in the country right now. Um, we blessed a depth with hooker in South Africa, obviously. I mean, the guys I've just mentioned that were at the festival, there's two or three other guys you could mention, not even f thinking about players like Buckus and Breitenbach from uh, Gray, uh, you know, from Gray College and from uh, Belgium. Um, so this is someone that's very much under the radar in terms of the hooking position, but he won't be under the radar for much longer. He's such an outstanding player. Um, you can see he's got great presence on the field. His teammates absolutely love him. Um, and, uh, I mean, I think this season is going to be a breakout for him. I think there's going to be a lot of talk about him. And, uh, you know, as soon as the signatures start, uh, you know, going around the schoolboy signing start, I definitely think there are going to be a lot of unions looking at a player like this. He's a very, very interesting prospect, guys. Keep a close eye on him. 
Then finally, Lou said, um, went with Ronan Dutton from Bishops. Um, I thought Bishops were outstanding in terms of the backline play, and that's where everybody focused. But the forward play, guys, this is something we haven't seen in terms of uh, Bishops rugby for some time. Um, as I'm talking specifically about the front row. Their front row was absolutely lethal. I mean, in the first game against St. Andrews, they absolutely decimated the St. Andrews scrum. It, it, it wasn't even close. And although early stages of the game against uh, Otaniqua, um, you know, they, they were being dominated a bit, but then they came back and Dutton really took it to his opposite number. And his opposite number is no joke. That guy's a, he's a big boy and a powerful ball carrier. So to, to show that much uh, character to come back and not be overwhelmed by the occasion, especially because, I mean, you know, Quachas always have massive packs. I thought Ronan was absolutely outstanding. And uh, I, I think there's going to be quite a few P, uh, schools, um, tight heads as well in Western Cape schools rugby, that are going to be looking at this and being quite nervous about having to face a prospect like this. Very interesting player and another one that might be under the radar a little bit. But I'm 100% confident when it comes to uh, signing contracts, he's definitely going to be in demand. So thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video, guys. Uh, obviously, there's always a lot of back and forth in these types of videos in terms of the dream teams and all the rest of it. But let us know your thoughts. Any players you think we're missing and any grumpy parents, you're more than welcome to comment. But any negative comment about any of the boys or any of the schools, you will get blocked. You will get banned and uh, nobody's going to miss you. Have a fantastic week further, guys. Cheers. Bye.